Stuffed pig, sexuality is a weapon, by R. Bud. In every expression of life we find duality. Man and woman man are the original binary code, or 010101. We are all sexual beings, and all of life is sparked from sexual energy. None of us would be here if sexual rituals did not take place. Whether or not the ritual was conscious or not is a different story. Sexual energy is the raw, unrefined energy that is the base for all life. All creation is sexual energy in different levels of refinement. This energy must be harnessed, harnessed to be utilized in a holistic way. Think of all the energy spent in efforts to attract attention. A tension. Raw sexually orientated attention. Attention that is sexually orientated is felt in the lower parts of our being, from the heart down. We can tell the likely results of a collision with the opposite sex when we are in tune with the sensations of the body. When our sensation from our, our sensation from changing pace, getting closer or further, is rooted in the lower spine, the relationship will be one of lust, money, sex, food, and sleeping together. When if the energy is flowing throughout the entire being, the two people have much more refined motives to expend their energy on. Enlightenment, art, and science, and creating together. Not just creating dreams or sleeping together, but living dreams by working towards them. Attention is spiritual currency. We buy, sell, and trade in many forms to grab attention of sexually, a sexually desirable person. We're giving away our sexual energy with each purchase. Pure chasing. Exchanging energy is a great thing. Two people can refine their sexual energy and expand and evolve together, but when there is a bad investment of sexual energy, meaning no return on your investment or imbalanced return, we become leached of our life force. When the life force energy is broken, the willpower is broken. There is nothing that ages a male faster than ejaculation, especially unconscious ejaculation. Where does all this energy go that we give off? In ancient Greece, the term for sexual vampires was impuses. Impuses are entities that have no loyalty to a sex, male or female, but typically take the form of females in one's dreams to extract their life force via what people call wet dreams. So any dream that you don't remember is a traumatic dream. Today, they are commonly known as succubus or incubi in the male form. Most that will fall under this labeling don't even know that their behavior is destroying them as well, because most bodies behaving in this manner are not being controlled by their own true will, but by the will of another. In many cases, a female will hold resent towards a male if he does not ejaculate each and every time they have sex. Why would the female need this if she doesn't want children? What other reason would she want to extract the male seed for? If a male does not intend to have a child, then why is he ejaculating? Not to say celibacy is the answer, but controlling the trigger of ejaculation is critical in controlling the life force within the male biology. Males are addicted to death and addicted to their mothers in most cases. The constant urge to return to the womb coupled with the urge to die, the French do call the ejaculation a little death or petite mort or something of that nature. <laughs> a male will give off all creative energy in exchange for a brief sense of euphoria, which is nothing in comparison to what would be if the sexual energy was properly refined. All to feel as though he now has value from having had sex with some desirable female. In this case, who are you really giving your value to? You or the female? If you're chasing less desirable womb men, you again have to question your motives for ejaculation. Why do males crave the low energy state? Why is lethargy a state of comfort for most, a male or female? Why is sex deemed an act that drains us of energy instead of expanding our energy? How much is really spent in a lifetime of seeking attraction? A male gives their mind, money, and seed to experience things that destroy him, all to operate as if he's not doing so, as if that's some sign of strength. For most couples, the female is the culinary artist, the chef of the household. Again, most people are addicted to the foods their mother subjected them to as children. And when a male collides with a womb man that reminds him of the behavior that his mother take, you know, takes part in, he quickly breaks down. Get to a man's heart through his stomach, right? The diet of most people on earth consists of blood and starch. Dead animals, animal milk and sugar. Starch, the sugar. Cocaine, starch. It's all forms of starch that is the common denominator of addiction. It is the beginning. Uh, you know, the metaphorical apple. All slaves are and were subjected to high starch diets. Currently, most males are slaves to their own sexuality, so the diet influence is critical in understanding the cycles we create that destroy us. Feed a horse sugar cubes, a dog treats, a slave rice and chicken, beef, brew, whatever, because that's all alcohol is or beer is just liquid bread. Starch, you know, is, is, is just pure, is pure sugar in all forms. Alcohol is liquid starch, basically liquid cocaine. So not, all, not only are we addicted to the same stuff we spray on our clothing, starch, which makes it stiff, and we wonder why we become stiff over time, we're also addicted to what the body converts the starch into, that is alcohol. So we become addicts way before we can even realize. 
We cannot control the alcohol problems of the world without controlling our starch intake. If you remove or reduce the starch and sugar intake, you will have less of a desire for alcohol. It's just simple math. Sugar and starch creates lymphatic buildup, lymph or mucousy film in the mucous membrane. They, they protect the body from acids, acidic st- substances, unstable substances like st- starch and sugar because they're not in whole form. They're refined. So when they hit the system, the mucous membrane just seeks to stick to it to purge these chemicals and all the dead cells that they created out of the body. So the mucus sticks to the offensive material and is purged out of any orifice, acne. If the liver is taxed, it'll start coming out the skin, come out the feces, urine, of course. As the lymph calcifies or dries, it is called plaque or cholesterol. This plaque blocks the cells beneath it from getting the normal oxygen and blood flow that they would normally experience. As we continue to insert foods into the body that cause lymphatic buildup, the organs become calcified and swell. They begin to fail. If there is excess buildup in the intestines, which is the case for most of Earth, it, call, it creates dehydration in the entire region, meaning the sexual organs and the bladder all suffer as well. As the body pulls moisture from the rest of the system to process the sugar or starch being eaten, the more sugar or starch consumed, the more water is needed to process it. Where Earth goes, water flows. The constant buildup of fluid and food creates a pressure on the prostate of the male. This causes hyperactive sexual activity, mentally and physically. This internal pressure also blocks the male from truly being able to breathe properly. Since he cannot breathe properly, he cannot maintain blood flow, which is what keeps the penis erect anyway. Rich blood flow or rich iron flow, you know, you will have greater sexual performance. Think of the body like a car. It's like if you have, your oil is not in good shape. When this occurs, a male is subject to premature ejaculation, pretty much guaranteed. Most males are ignorant to ejaculation or holding the seed and the, and the cycle it back up the spine, back through the pineal, which is an organ itself, through the female herself, down her spine to complete the cycle of energy. This is not possible if the craniosacral rhythm of the body is thrown off. This is the flow of energy from the base of the spine to the top of the skull. The acid buildup of sugar and starch, rotting flesh, and dairy products creates a cocktail for impotence, erectile dysfunction. Dairy, sugar, and meat keep the blood thick and low oxygen. These are the greatest producers of mucus and inflammation on the earth, the unholy trinity. Inflammation or swelling of of the organs and mucus buildup, the the swelling of the organs and mucus buildup are the root of all disease. If you're swollen, that's the precipice for all disease. Inflammation is the first symptom of disease. Dis-ease. People of earth do do not know natural from unnatural. So typically a womb man will cook what her family cook. They call this heredity. That's hilarious. So as she stuffs her pig, her spouse, which means she means spice, with foods that have crippled him over time and lead to his impotence, she creates a serious sense of subconscious resentment in the process. The male is lost in the lower part of his being. Sexual urges and lust for food and money and security begin to devour him as the years go on. As he's devouring this food that's killing him, he has to kill himself because what is in is what's out. The food is eating him to death, breaking his heart, literally. He has no choice but to resent her. It will just manifest as nitpicking or unreasonable anger over minuscule matters. But the male has a sense of comfort attached to the foods via his mother, so he is now addicted at all chemical levels, even neurotransmissions. His thoughts are attached to an emotional response or stimulation, and the food satisfies this lust momentarily, but the processing of the incomplete foods creates even more emotional stirring, which leads to more bad decisions and investments of breath, because all you have is your breath to invest in life. That's it. As his life force is drained over time, he will age more rapidly than he should. She will find distaste in his lack of ambition because he will have no energy or willpower to create a lifestyle where he is his own boss. Over time, his sexual energy will be non-existent or driven so inward that he would rather masturbate if even possible. Since he doesn't even own himself and he isn't his own boss, he's ultimately a slave to his own sexuality. He has no idea what he is truly spending. Sexuality is the base currency. It is the first profession. Again, money is energy. That's why we charge money. When we continually go through cycles and expect different results without changing our behavior, we generate more and more anxiety, with, which generates self-doubt, which generates poor results and in investments, which only leads to more anxiety. The male is now giving off all forms of currency as far as, as energy is concerned, because anxiety is a form of energy. This only spills over into the female's life, too, of course, making her question herself and her own value because of who she's with and how she's with them. All this distrust for others and their true intentions comes from a lack of trust for ourselves, of course. When we are loving, we attract loving people, repelling hate-filled people. We get what we deserve. 
Since we are so driven by attachment and comfort and not true love or selfless giving, we operate in life under the guise of need. We say that we need this or that, when in reality, if we did not have what we needed, we would not, here to, we would not be here to discuss the fact that we don't have what we needed. We would be dead, which means we found what we needed in death. Wanting is infinite. Lust is infinite. We are operating with intentions of want and not selflessly giving. We create a false sense of self, a persona on top of the person. If we are traumatized by circumcision, vaccines, near-death experiences, witnessing horrific events, we become concerned with lack. The more we focus on lack, the more we expand it. We feel deep down that something was taken from us, and to compensate for this lack, we have passions. And you pass them on to your children, and you keep the cycles going. This trauma creates a mental, emotional, and physical scarring. We carry these scars around, not wanting them to heal, because if they heal, we have no crutch or excuse for our own unhappiness or lack of peace. So we attract other false, selfish people when we are false, selfish. So we live in an illusion and merge with someone else living in an illusion, which creates delusion. Now sexual ownership and satisfaction of the five senses, if you even have that many left, become the main prerogative. We become so scared of letting go of what we know that we block the new. Lessons or blessings that we would have attracted, we give up. Because we want some, we know some, we know the dysfunction. We know that. We don't even, we don't even know our own ultimate agenda. So, we don't even know what conflicts with our ultimate a, a agenda. So anything really, once we know it, anything conflicting with it, we know that that is really should always be labeled as lust. Attachment is the biggest opponent to true love. Giving space tells more than time. Space tells more than time. If you love someone, give them space, and you will both know the true depths of your relationship. All relationships are for learning. Once a lesson is completed, the stage has to change or everything rots and spoils. Same thing. Some couples are actually two halves to one energy body and have to come together to merge again via a child becoming one again. One plus one equaling one in this circumstance. This is a cosmic agreement. Once a goal is reached, whether you know it or not, you must expand experience and continue to learn or evolve or you will begin to spoil. For couples that would like to create complementary cosmic trajectories, tantric sex is a must. A person must master the art of controlling the breath before they can even think of engaging in sexual activity. If you breathe from your diaphragm and expand your lower lungs, which have more blood than the upper lungs, the organs all experience a massage effect. Digestion is better and the blood flow is increased. Yoga, or yoka, returning to the yoke or void, is another tool that is a must in relationships. Once the subtle energies are sensed, there can be more respect given to our own sexuality. Sexuality. You cannot lock your sphincter, maintain pressure in the anus region throughout the day, then you have acidic or toxic buildup in your colon. Breathing properly and being able to consistently apply pressure to this region allows for the better flow of energy from the base of the spine to the top of the head, from the root chakra to the halo, or what people call those things. When our attention or energy is flowing from the top to the bottom, we can be our total being in all moments. When it is obstructed, we go from living from the root, the beast, to the heart, to the true self. Oh, yeah, we go from living from the root, the beast, to the heart, to the true self sporadically, though. When energy levels are high and maintained, we operate from a state of three in one, the trinity. This is how we truly express self, by being in tune with self, by having, having a body that is in tune with the universe or the one verse. For more information on diet and sexuality, vegans and vegetarians from Aid of Extremes and Busted at World Created by Nuts, both by our bud.